Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today's Friday, November 10th, 2017. Uh, let's do a quick market overview in this video. We'll touch on the broad markets, uh, gold, uh, the U.S. dollar, GDX, the gold mining stocks, uh, biotechs, and maybe the energy sector, and that's it. We'll wrap it up. Uh, so those are the sectors I've really been covering lately, and I haven't posted much on gold uh, recently, but I did have a request for an update in the trading room. Uh, there haven't been really many new developments gold uh, in the gdx trade has just been dead money and that's why i've stepped aside and really haven't uh, had a lot to, to post on it but I, I will i will cover that we may be setting up here um soon for a uh the next long entry in gold so let's jump uh Let's start out with the broad markets. Let's do that. Uh, I received, uh, you know, a couple requests. I had an email last night. Um, somebody made mention the trading room. The email last night was, you know, you know, he, uh, the person had expressed disappointment, uh, you know, referring to yesterday's move as a stick save, and then, um, you know, in the trading room there was a comment that the markets can't go down. No. I just want to say this. Number one, technically, you know, there's you know, the, the term stick save when used in trading uh, is usually referred to a, a market that was going to close down, particularly when you have a break of support. Uh, the markets are red and then all of a sudden they ramp up and then close back above that support level or they go from red, uh, deeply red to green. Uh, remember, we did neither of that yesterday. The markets have, have broken down recently. So, um, we're going to stick with the 60 minute time frames here. Uh, I covered those pretty much extensively yesterday uh, but uh, keep in mind QQQ despite the late day rally the bounce off support and that was a support level identified in advance we were deeply oversold the biggest down day that the Qs have had in a long time and uh, it's only natural to see buyers step in and uh, and keep in mind we closed down over half a percent we closed down 0.52 percent on QQQ uh, so we still close the day red um, you know that you can't Obviously, the primary trend is up, but uh, again, that wasn't a bullish day. It's uh, still a significant down day. Now, here we are. I waited till the markets open to start this video so we could see what the Qs are doing, and they're down another quarter percent. Uh, so, you know, I'm expecting a resumption of the dump downtrend. Anything's possible. This market has been resilient. But uh, so here's what I'm watching for real quick. Uh, number one. Uh, these trend indicators, they're pretty reliable. Uh, I want to see this. I like the, the 9 EMA, uh, which is a signal line. want to see that cross below the zero line, as well as this 1333 histogram, which just represents the 13 and 33 EMA pairs. When the 13 crosses down below the 33, this goes red. Uh, and you can see these things do a pretty good job of defining trends. Uh, this, These are the downtrends when they you know, when you when those cross, uh, it gives you an early indication of a bearish trend and it keeps you uh, in that trend or it reaffirms a trend until you have a bullish cross. So again, I'm circling where we had the bearish crossovers and you can do the same thing here with the bullish crossovers. Uh, you can see, and of course, during an uptrend, these signals last longer. So there's a bullish cross right here. Uh, I told you the trend was bullish up until about this point right here. Another bullish crossover told you the trend was bullish all the way up until this point. And so you can see it does a good job of defining these trends. And that's one thing I'm watching for. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me, uh, there it is. My scenario still has us coming down to this 150, 126 level, uh, possibly to put in a inverse, I'm sorry, not an inverse. I incorrectly stated that in the, on the front page yesterday and corrected that, a head and shoulders topping pattern. Um, whether we get that or not, that's support. So we don't have to have a, a head and shoulders topping pattern for QQQ to move down to that level. And then that's a pretty important support level. Uh, so I'd be looking for a reaction there no matter what happens, uh, followed by a uh, you know bounce, followed by a break, and, and eventually move down to 149.21. Uh, so that's that. And I just wanted to clarify again, um, you know, if we're just talking very short-term stuff, we're living in the world of the intraday charts, the Bears won yesterday. It's that simple. We were down half a percent. Nothing to write home about. But, um, you know, there was, um, you know, I had a great day trading, you know, uh, trading NQs. These are, you know, bounce targets. I called these in advance. This one you had on the 10-minute chart, uh, just a beautiful doji right there at support. You can see that, how we overshot that level, that 152.40 level. 
uh, printed a doji. The next candlestick failed to close back ab uh, below that doji, and we, we rallied from there. And uh, right up, this is where I posted yesterday, we had a brief overshoot. Uh, you know, they were buying it into the close or probably some intraday traders, uh, day traders, short covering. Uh, but that's close enough for government work. There's that 156, uh, 153.61. Also the 50, or I'm sorry, uh, that one is the 61.8% retracement. Um, and I, my apologies, I may have also stated this. I was looking at this level for reversal. You can see I had resistance lines here at the 50% FIB uh, as well as at uh, 61.8. And that's where we went to. So, yeah, I, I thought we might reverse here. Uh, but that's a very logical and very well-defined uh, resistance level there as well. And so far, that capped the advance. You can see we're moving lower today. So that's that. Uh, that's QQQ. Let's look at SPY and we'll move on to the uh, other things that I'm looking at. And there's SPY. I mentioned the uh, back test. Um, you know, member David K pointed out in the trading room. I'd been posting this 60-minute chart recently, and I neglected to post that until he pointed it out. We had a back test yesterday, and again, this is all just the late-day ramp. It's, it's, you know, it, we went up through there, and that didn't destroy the the back test. We had a. Um, Sorry, I had an interruption there. Uh, so anyways, that was the late day ramp. You can see it. This is a one minute chart. Light, late day ramp took us a little bit above there. But uh, and there it is. Spy is moving down as well. And we go back to the 60 minute chart. So all we had is one candlestick back above into the channel above the trend line. And now we're back below it. So for all intents and purposes, this is a successful back test of the level, especially if we continue to move lower. And there's all the divergences, everything else that say we're going lower. Uh, you can see um, the trend indicators on SPY are actually already crossing. We have a slight cross into bearish territory on both the PPO signal line as well as the 1333. So we have a back test. Price is below the uh, channel. We're close enough now. And this is, by the way, a very, very objective shorting entry. If you trade ES, uh, you know, you can short a back test and you can, you know, in day trade, maybe go down to a, a, another test of this 256.18 level, or there's an X target there. And uh, the reason it's so objective, whether or not it works out, and I know a lot of you are thinking, well, this trend's resilient, you can't short this market. It's objective because you can short a back test with a stop just above those recent highs. You can see there's a gap as well. That's the bottom of a gap. There's several candlesticks there. Uh, so well, whether it plays out or not, your downside is minimal compared to the upside potential if it does. That's trading. Uh, take objective setups, you know, at, you know, short it, it bounces back to resistance, uh, short a breakdown of support, go long at support if you think it's going to hold. Those are objective entries, uh, especially when confirmed with divergences and other things in there. You're not just taking a pot shot at, uh, you know, a, a move back to um in this case, resistance. All right, let's move on. That's uh, So we'll watch and see what happens. And again, those are the levels. They were outlined quite a bit in detail yesterday. Uh, let's move on to gold. And uh, yeah, most of you know that uh, my analysis on gold hinges largely on what the U.S. dollar is doing. Uh, that's a 60-minute chart. I wanted to look at the daily chart. Okay, so forever and a day, this is, you know, we, when we were still up within this pattern, there was this well-defined trend line, divergent high, bearish rising wedge. Um, for those of you not familiar, I, re I remain uh, longer term uh, bearish on the U.S. dollar. And uh, at this point, well, let me just go over what I'm seeing here. Uh, this is what I was looking at before. We hit that first target. We bounced up to the top of my bounce target zone, and we still haven't hit. I did an update in the trading room uh, by request today, but uh, you can see we've come within just basis points of the top of my target zone. So that may be close enough there uh, to really satisfy that, that pullback to that level. Um, we're seeing the PPO cross up, make a bullish crossover. This circle just shows that the trend is below. Now, for those of you not familiar, I, I use a US, uh, Euro US dollar pair. The Euro is by far the largest component of the US dollar index. And so looking at this chart, it's basically looking at the dollar in reverse, because when this is falling, the dollar's going up. When the dollar goes up, that's uh, bearish for gold. When the dollar falls, 
or in other words, when the euro rises against the dollar, that's bullish for gold. So that's what I'm looking at. I want my, my uh, next entry on gold or GDX to align with this chart. I want to see, uh, make a pretty good case for the, uh, the euro bouncing against the dollar, in other words, the dollar falling. And that may be the case here. We have that uh, bullish crossover pending right there. Uh, that would be in itself a you could call it a buy signal. I like to see you know, more than more than just a bullish crossover on the PPO. Uh, be nice if that happened with a pull down uh, move down to support. But without you know without beating around the bush anymore, I'm watching this. I'm not completely um, ready to to engage the metals again yet. Uh, the reason is we're in no man's land. We're smack between support, and I would have really liked to see this final target zone hit, and it still very well may be hit. Trend indicators down below zero. Um, but we're also below now, right below a pretty significant resistance level. This 117 level I pointed out way back here when we were still up in the, the trend was bullish and we hadn't even broken down. That was my first target. And you can see how many times we've danced al along that level. And when we finally broke it, it was with a big red, very impulsive, the most impulsive bearish candle that we've had for months many months uh who knows could be a year or more when you go back uh that's the biggest red candle i can see uh point my point here is that validates that level uh, when you limp down through support it's not super convincing but when you smash down through it with an impulsive move that's what you want to see and it helps to validate that was a significant support level then we even came and back tested it again so this is a a very important level and if and when that's regained uh, the the case that the, uh, the bottom is in in this pair, the euro against the dollar, uh, the case can be made and, and that uh, will help uh, firm up any, uh, we need to still see a bullish setup in golden GDX, but that will certainly help the case. And then ultimately we could probably do a downtrend line here as well, which I should at this point put on. You can see there's a downtrend line. So 117 plus that downtrend line, we take that out. Then we take out my former bounce target zone. And I think it's safe to say that the uh, dollar has now, uh, the euro started its next thrust up against the dollar. And the dollar is uh, started its next leg down in a new, uh, what I believe to be a new bear market in the U.S. dollar. And that will be bullish for gold. So that's that. Um, we can certainly look at the charts of GDX and gold. It's been a dead money trade. This is why I've stepped aside. You know, we've traded this long and short, but uh, in recent months, um, <clears throat> one thing that I try to do both on this site personally is if I don't see a clear case to be uh, long or short of security, step aside. Nothing is more frustrating than being in a dead money trade, having your capital tied up, um, watching your, you know, go of profit to loss, profit to loss. So that's the story in GDX um, and, and gold as well. But you can see it's holding support. I had support at 2250. We could actually add down to those reaction lows now. So this is about 2225 now. That's that's all probably the uh, most important level there on GDX. And then you can see 23 is a very important level. You look at all these reactions and you can even see it on the 60 minute chart, it shows well. Uh, so in the uh, trading room, this is the update that I made here is that uh, you need to see this is the $23 level right here. Actually, I need to put that up a few ticks there few pennies there it is $23 look at all the reactions here along that level and so that's it and uh, again if, so if we continue to see the euro rise against the dollar take out those levels we see GDX break above here that's going to be bullish uh, I don't see a lot these are all potential resistance levels here price targets um, but this would be the next big one up here about 2391 uh, so that's GDX now tell you this if I had to be long or short right now I'd be long uh, I see minimal downside I think at worst case is maybe a little more downside or some sideways action so if you're a longer term investor um, certainly you could either you know if you don't have a position already you may want to start scaling into it uh, and if you do have a position you know give it a little room on the stops I showed you some levels you can see it here too we have a reaction down around 22 um, Ideally, that should hold on a, at least a daily closing basis. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, biotechs I've covered quite a bit recently, and that's another one I've stepped aside, uh, you know, short down on that rip and covered down here because we had hit support. That's a pretty well-defined support level. We did get a bounce. Um, wasn't very uh, impulsive, as you can see. We actually bounced twice, came back down. We continue to test this support level. That's about roughly 82.43. That's an important level. Uh, 
So let's watch to see if that holds. Now, as I like to say, support is support until and unless broken. So you have to respect it. Uh, you, you wouldn't be objective to short the biotechs right here, to short XBI um, while you're sitting right on support around 8250. Um, however, if that level goes, if it goes with the conviction, if those previous reaction lows go, uh, maybe. Another thing I'm watching here is a trend indicator. Now, you guys that follow me know that I like to use a PPO even on you know the daily time frame, 60 minutes time frame uh, or the MACD works just as well uh, using the signal line as a, a trend indicator bullish normally bullish one above zero bearish one below zero however I look at every single chart differently every into every security trades differently so when I when I look at XPI and I was looking at it today and I do this you know time to time if I if I see something uh, a lot of whipsaw signals if you look closely that 9 EMA has whipped has crossed below the zero line several times, which uh, would be whipsaw signals if you were using that zero line as a trend indicator. Um, but what I noticed, what stood out to me is every time it did that, those were brief whipsaw signals and they came right down here. You can see I added a yellow line uh, at about the negative 1.05 level. So just below the zero line. And that has done a phenomenal job of containing those pullbacks. And the times where you broke below it, you can see right here, there was a sell signal right there. We broke below it and you captured this, uh, the bulk of that drop there. Uh, and then we cross back bullish. And now biotechs have been in a, in a you know, an uptrend over the last two years. This is a two-year chart. Just to the left of the chart, there was a big correction. And since then, they bottomed and been moving up. And you can see how well this trend indicator has defined those uptrends, especially when you give it a little room. Again, I do this with moving averages as well. You know, a lot of people watch the commonly, you know, used moving averages, 50-day, 200-day. If I see a stock that has, uh, let's just say, look like it's done a pretty good job of, of uh, using the 200 day as support or resistance, but I see a lot of whipsaws through there. I'll go in there and I'll modify that and I'll start playing around with the numbers, drop it down to a 190 day moving average or a 210, 220 day. And then you might find that when you go back in time for years, that that particular stock works very well if you modify that 200 day and, and kick it out to a 220 or down to a 180 or whatever that number is. So I'll retrofit those moving averages because again, every security trades differently. And so just because something's a big round number and popularly used like a 200 day, same with this PPO uh, zero line. So you can see that's what I'm watching here. Enough on that, you can see the trends. It's caught the two bearish trends that we've had. You can see the big correction here caught and this one here it caught. Other than that, it's told you to stay long. And so therefore, uh, and again, it's not a, a sell signal in itself. The price would be break of support would be more of a sell signal than a trend indicator, but that would confirm. So we're watching this, or I'm watching this closely, this 9 EMA to drop below that 1.05 line, uh, as that now you know has done a better job of finding trends on XBI. So there it is. And if that does occur, break of support here, that happens. Uh, you know, we have my next big target zone would be down here. Uh, it's quite a drop in the biotechs. Uh, so. As of now, there's still a few that are at support. Oh, yeah, I wanted to show you that, too. Uh, I'm just showing you the top five by market cap in XBI right here. Uh, so just a handful of those. This is ABBV, uh, divergent high, but the PPO is curling up. You know, you had a divergent high at this point. We could put in another one. Sometimes divergences are burned through or they continue to build for a while. One to watch. Um, I think it eventually these divergences may play out. Um, but I wanted to show you a few others that are at support. And this also gives me pause on shorting the biotechs right now, being that they're at support. Um, uh, let's grab a tool here and just highlight. Here we are, 170.44. Uh, you can see it's acted as support. A lot of reactions, gaps, uh, quite a bit on that level. So there's a, a, a one of the major biotechs, one of the largest components of XBI at support. Certainly, if that support level goes, I've given you other ones. Trend indicator is bearish, but we're also oversold. You can see here, last time we were oversold was here. The time before that was right here. So the odds aren't very compelling right now uh, to go long. This time we had bullish divergence right there at that low. So there it is, oversold at support on one of the biggest names in there. There's Gilead, which is an official trade on the site right now, backtesting this trend line as well as horizontal support while deeply oversold. Same story, you can go back in time, look at what happened every time the stock was oversold. Uh, so, you know, mixed signals, trend indicators are bearish, but it looks like that 
PPO is wanting to curl up. It hasn't done so yet. Um, even if Gilead goes a little lower, this is a support zone I have there. So it may want to pierce that, that back test on that trend line a little bit and still, you know, I you can give it some room down to that 70, 82 level or so. And then there's Celgene, another official long. We caught that one on the bounce, you know, on the down here somewhere, traded up, hit the first bounce target. Uh, it's hit it several times, working its way up through there. Um, again, uh, deeply oversold. I don't think this stock has been this oversold uh, in years, if not ever. You know, we've hit almost 10 on the RSI. And uh, you can see the PPO is making a bullish cross. So what I think is probably going to happen with this one, oh, I don't know if we're going to get to that T2 level before it does this. But what I could see happening here is something along these lines. A little more, another pullback, um, possibly even take out those that previous low and then put in a divergent low at some point. That's just one possibility, something like this. And uh, then ultimately move on up there. But as of now, it looks good. We'll just leave that swing trade alone. If you didn't take profits there, um, I'm sorry, yeah, that's the swing trade target. That was a quick bounce target there to 100.95. BIIB, there's Biogen IDEC, IDEC and um, Regeneron, REGN, another one at support. So that's it. We'll, we'll stop here. I just wanted to show you as I'm going through, again, some of the largest ones. Uh, last time we were here was the last three or four times we were oversold. And you can see what's happened. Just follow price to the right from these points. So uh, do you want to short a stock that is oversold? Uh, with a history of this at support as well. You can see how well this uh, this level has acted as support and resistance in the past. Uh, so that's that. And if that level does break and we become more oversold, or what happens sometimes when you're oversold, you get another thrust down. Uh, maybe we undercut those lows slightly, wrong trend line. Uh, we undercut those lows slightly and we put in a divergent low. That's a possibility. All these are possibilities, but I just wanted to point out that yeah, you might want to yeah, you know, hold off on shorting the biotechs until you see a little more evidence. Uh, and to go long, same story. I mean, you could go long here. It's certainly objective with a stop not too far below. Uh, let's move on to the next one and we'll wrap up here with the uh, XES. Not much to report that I haven't already. The uh, right, the inverse head and shoulders bottoming pattern is now fully formed. We are at resistance. Remember that neckline is resistance. So, um, you know, I mentioned one or two things for my preferred scenario would be a you know consolidation and or pullback. Um, so far, we've consolidated for a few days. You know, we've we've been trading right around that neckline now for about the past week. Um, you know, what's giving me pause again, we have potential negative divergence. So, you know, the longer we consolidate or if we had a pullback, I think that would be healthy to work off the overbought conditions and then give us the, the power, the fuel to have a sustained breakout and go up and hit that first target and then move on up to my, my final target there right here around 2050. Um, anything is possible. There's a lot of momentum in this sector. Um, I've seen these, you can see, you know, these, these stocks, especially the oil and gas equipment and services stocks, when they move, they can move. So we could break out, but again, that breakout will come with divergence in place, uh, overbought, and it's just not very objective. Uh, again, if you entered back here at the bottom of the right shoulder, you've got plenty of room. And if you're patient, you can wait and either see, wait for that consolidation or wait for a breakout. And even if it proves to you know fail come back under here uh, a lot can happen here i just wanted to mention that uh, i would be cautious uh and personally holding off if, if the energy stocks break out right now um because i think at best case scenario if they were to break out right now without any consolidation at best case scenario they go up a little bit and then they come back in and they back test the uh, neckline so you could probably get another entry there an objective entry to then swing up to that next target all right, uh, that's it. Let's uh, let's just see what happens today in the broad markets. And um, oh, I, one more I wanted to cover. I see this one moving now on another monitor. Is uh, Kara? Uh, there's been a lot of interest in this one. Uh, I've been pointing out this downtrend line, falling wedge, positive divergence on the PPO, and looks like it broke out today. Uh, so. Uh, 
so far so good. I'll check the volume. Volume looks good on my other monitor so far. And you can see 1444 will be your first target on that one. So there's one that's moving along with a lot of the other pot stocks recently. So uh, this one's a biotech, but it has a lot of uh, drugs uh, in, in trials that uh, use uh, uh, their cannabinoid, uh, can cannabis-based drugs. All right, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.